So the plan for this video, we're going to go through the Terraform project structure best practices. We'll go through the wrong way to do it, which most teams tend to do when they first start. We'll go through how to structure your small project and then how to structure a multi-environment larger project. And lastly, how to structure your deployment from your GitHub branches. So we'll start off over here on the wrong way to do it. What teams tend to do to start, they will create their project directory and then inside of that, they'll create a file for each type of service. So they'll do an ec2.tf, an s3.tf, a lambda.tf, and then they have these generic files that are outputs, variables, provider, and readme. These four are great. That's expected. That's what you need. But the problem here is that you're kind of mixing two strategies. So you end up having these files that are completely separate for each type of service, but you might actually have different reasons to have them. So if you have a Lambda function that depends on an S3 bucket, those two things are now in two different files, but then you might have four other Lambda functions that are a separate kind of module, you could say, within that project. So you end up breaking it down by services, and it's not actually the best logical breakdown because it doesn't put the services that work together in the same location. And that's what you really want to look for to have that logical readability. So this is okay when things are really small, but the problem is that you start really small and then end up scaling and you just have these files that there's so many files and you need to go look through multiple different ones and figure out where you're actually looking for the Lambda function that correlates to your S3 or your EC2. It gets very confusing once you scale and you should be prepped for that. So if we move over here into the small project, this is kind of the next evolution, the better way to do it. This small project, you're going to get rid of all of those EC2, the S3, the ones that are specific to your service, and we're going to do a main.tf. This main.tf will house everything inside of it, and that way it is one file that manages all your resources. Now you're probably thinking if you have a lot of resources, that's just going to be a, a huge jumble of code inside of that main.tf. That's where we build out modules. So the modules are what allow us to get that logical grouping of our services. So in this case, we're going to have these five files like we discussed before, but then we're going to create a modules directory. And inside of that, we're going to create a new file. And inside of that modules, we're going to create a new directory for each service that we build our module on. So we'll have an S3 module, an EC2 module, and a Lambda module. And then each of these modules will have the same configuration. You'll see it's four of these files. We don't need a provider.tf, but the four others will stay here. Now I have some documentation linked in the description below on how to build out these modules if you're new to this, but these modules will allow us to structure our code so that we can create reusable functions if you're familiar with other programming languages. So this way we don't have to duplicate code and constantly write the same things. So if we need three EC2 instances and we just have to change a few parameters between them, we can create a module, configure all the static stuff, and then set some variables. And that way we just have a few lines of code to be invoked from our main.tf. This will allow us to name our invocations based off of our structure. So then inside of my main.tf, I would reference module S3 as the source, and then I would pass in the parameters that go to that S3 module, and that's how I'll create my new structure. This allows for consistency among the grouping of these modules. It reduces the duplication of code, and it creates a layout within your repository that is more logical and readable for users. And next on the list, before we jump into the multi-environment, we're going to go over to the deployment to see what this looks like. So if I remove this, what we have here is our GitHub to our AWS. So we will have, in this case, we're going to have a development, a staging, and a production environment. And we'll have one account for each of them in AWS, along with one branch for each in GitHub. So what this allows us to do is create a deployment pipeline from each branch going into the AWS account. So in this case, we would have development branch. When we push changes into that branch off of our feature branch, those changes are automatically deployed to the development account through either a CI CD pipeline or Terraform cloud, whatever your deployment strategy is. This way we have a one-to-one -one mapping of our code in each branch environment going to our branch, going into our AWS account that is for that respective branch from development through staging through prod. It's all one source of truth, one code base, and we just branch them out so that we know that changes are getting deployed sequ sequentially. So that we know that changes are getting deployed sequen So that we know that changes are getting deployed sequentially. The problem here though, when you get to an enterprise scale, sometimes you need some differences in the infrastructure. So 
we have variables and we can change that. So for example, we could make a variable called environment and name it dev stage prod. And that way we can create our variable names. And that way we can create our resource names dynamically based off what environment we're in. So we might prefix S3 with the environment. So we get dev S3, staging S3, etc. And that way it's done automatically and we don't have to have code changes for that. We just change the variable within here. The problem, however, though, at some large enterprise type of companies, you're not going to have a one-to-one -one match in the environment that you're building within because not everything will be in your control. You might be responsible for this project, but there's another team that's responsible for the networking that builds out that project and another one that sets up the D and another one sets up your DNS and your SSL certificates. And there's just a lot of variables at play that are not within the directory that are not 100% managed by your Terraform. And that's where we need something a little more complex to break down that isolation. So this is where we move into the multi-environment structure. Within this multi-environment structure now, you'll see we added a new environment. So if we compare here, modules is gonna stay the same. We're gonna have S3, EC2, Lambda. Each of those will have their own module, but we're gonna make now a main.tf and outputs.tf, all of these files within each environment. So now we just tripled the amount of files within environments. So whereas prior, we would manage our project environments through branching now we're going to have directory which is trunk based as well as branch based protection here so we're so we're building another layer of safety within our infrastructure in pushing change now if i wanted to change so now if i wanted to enforce a change within this project i can either change the module down here which again that's protected by my branch base so i would have to change the module and then push it into development and then push it into staging and into production. That way we have the difference in modules there and they're all isolated. So let's say my staging environment, we need it to be completely locked down. It has to meet certain requirements from compliance, um, no public network access, but our development, we're kind of like, yeah, let's just get it built. Let's let the developers move, give it internet access. We're not really worried about the security and compliance of the development environment. Now we don't have that one-to-one -one match and that's where we need this kind of structure. <coughs> So in this structure, we now have our three environments as their own directories and each main.tf outputs, they will all be separate from one another. So I can come in here and call my EC2 module. And this time I'm going to say public network access enabled. Whereas in my staging and production, I might set public, public network access disabled. And in my development environment, I might not need a VPC to be built at all, but in staging and production, I might need to build out a VPC. So adding in this extra layer allows us more safety in pushing our changes to prevent change across other environments. And we can now have a split across these infrastructures where they're not matching. It is considered best practice by Terraform, but you do risk having difference in environments that makes it really hard to debug because now you don't have that one-to-one -one match. And that's really one of the strong suits of Terraform is that you know what you have in one environment matches the other and you can push change safely. But when you do combine this strategy with your branch based, you're able to get a layer of isolation across your infrastructure that you can really manipulate it as you need to fit whatever is required and still have everything as code documented whenever changes occur. So now if you found this video helpful and you want to learn more about how to actually structure your Terraform workspaces within Terraform Cloud to enforce this type of strategy, go ahead and check out this video on screen here where I go through exactly how to break down your projects and your workspaces inside of Terraform Cloud.